Good evening and welcome to a brand new episode of Freewheeling. I am Siddharth Vinayak Patankar and boy do we have a special show for you today. It is a big one because, uh, well, there's lots of reasons why you're going to agree with me on that. Those of you who know already from my social media posts, uh, it's someone who we are getting in onto our platform for the first time, but not someone who hasn't been on the show before. What I'm referring to is, of course, the car and bike show on, on television. And uh, the person in question was very much there when the Kia Seltos made its India debut, world debut as well, here in India for the first time. That was in the summer of last year. And like I said, those of you who have seen some of my social posts, you already know who I'm talking about. And so the man who heads design for Kia in North America and is vice president at the company as well is joining me right now. Please welcome Tom Kearns. Hi, good, good evening. Thank you so much for having me. And good morning to you, Tom. I know it's uh, you're <laughs> on the other side of the world and uh, you know it's kind of early still for you. So firstly, huge thanks for agreeing to do this and, and welcome. Yeah, thank you. My, it's my pleasure to, to join you today. Now, it's great to have you. And uh, you know, I'm going to start off by jumping straight into it uh, and, and talk about uh, you know, the last time you were here in India. Uh, Tell us about that trip because obviously from the from the point of view of Kia, uh, that, that was huge. It was the, the brand debut officially happening. It was also the first time we were seeing the first production car which was going to be you know made here, launched here. And it was the first time we were seeing that segment of vehicle from Kia coming out. It was a global premiere. So, you know, for us it was a it was a big important day for the industry. And I'm sure it was for Kia too. It was a big event for for Kia, for sure. Um, it was a big debut for the, for the car, and but just to be introduced to the to, to the market as well, um, yeah, it was a big uh, a big milestone for Kia, for sure. I still remember the uh, kind of reactions that were coming in because uh, you know obviously the car, even in the run up to the launch, when we'd seen the concept, and then you know we uh, started to see some of the uh, initial pictures, etc. Uh, it created a lot of buzz. So um, the fact that it was also destined for the U.S. because you know a few months later we were at the uh, Los Angeles Auto Show, where the car then debuted in in the United States as well. Um, talk us through the significance of the, the Celtos and then also you know its design, obviously because that had to be it had to be appealing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean it's uh, I think it's an interesting car because or vehicle because um, it's it's well, at least for our market, it's not a big car. Uh, I know for the India market, it's uh, maybe more of a more of a midsize or maybe even larger type vehicle. But it has a lot of character, you know. For a for an inexpensive, smaller car, uh, I think we're able to really give the 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 look uh, an emotional um, uh, character that um, is quite unique. As we were talking there, we could see visuals of the, uh, the the U.S. spec car, you know, the one that was done up in, in yellow, uh, the same color that was, I think, the communication or the launch color when it first came out at the uh, at the L.A. show. Um, are, the, are the two cars very different, the U.S. and Indian version, since you're obviously familiar with both? I'm sorry, what was the question? Are they, are they similar? Are, are the two different or is there anything that you can straight away think of as the one key difference between the U.S. and mm -hmm. India spec? They're pretty similar. The only thing I, that might be different is the, the front ramp angles or approach angles. All right. Um just double checking that you can hear me clearly because we lost a few words of what you were saying just now. Um, and um, the, you know, the significance of it here in India hasn't been lost because not only was it the, the debut model for the brand, but I'm sure you're familiar with the fact that it's also been a runaway success. Uh, so, you know, there's a huge number of them that have already been sold. And even though we're in lockdown right now, I can tell you that it's one of the, uh, the buzzing models on our site in terms of searches and, you know, people looking it up. So even even when we had the uh, the story from LA of the US spec launching, even that did well. So you know, I mean, there's a clear clearly a lot of anticipation around it. But the time you were here in India, 
Um, was it your first trip? Uh, what, what were your impressions on that trip? I know it must have been pretty hot when you were here. Yeah, it was actually my first uh, first time in India, and uh, it was I had quite an experience. I was uh, fascinated by many different things. First of all, the the the, the people and how um, I don't know, I had the impression that they're very warm and very uh, inviting. Um, and then the amount of people, obviously, and the population in the dense city of uh, New Delhi, and then the amount of cars and, and uh, motorcycles as well. You know, in fact, I'm going to sort of start to pull up some of these pictures as well that uh, you shared with me. Uh, you seem to be quite fascinated by the traffic, I suppose. Everybody who comes uh, to India is. Uh, at one time like that. So it was, it was quite an experience for me. Yeah, it is. Uh, as we say, sometimes it's a bit of an assault on the senses <laughs> when you're not prepared for it. Uh, yeah. But but did you also get a chance to sort of look around and, and see a few things? I know you also shared a very nice picture of the Lotus Temple. Um, yeah. I think you went in and, and had a look at the uh, at, a, at a carpet weaver as well, from what I can see from these pictures. Yeah, I didn't have a lot of time, but I, I did spend an extra day just so I could at least... Uh, quickly you know get around and, and see some sites and try to get a feel for the for the city as much as I could um, but yeah I just, so I got I got around a little bit and um, the food too I love I, I had some uh, great some fantastic uh, meals in India and I I really like the food a lot that's great to hear <laughs> and you know what this means essentially is that you have to come back and spend more time because you know, different parts of the country are, are so exceedingly different from each other that there's lots yes. more to show you. A um, lot of people, by the way, are logging in to this live session. And so you're getting a lot of people saying hello to you, uh, welcoming you as well. Uh, you know, given, given the fact that we are now in a, in a sort of a virtual existence, uh, you know, I can safely say that we're sort of welcoming you back to India in a sense. So, yes. so thank you for I being here not. again. I would love to come again and, and you know spend some more time and uh, um, uh, be uh, sort of get a feel for the for some of the cities a bit more, and then also be able to see the Celtos on the road. I think would be uh, would be interesting for me just to see how it how it sits in the environment over there. Oh, you're going to see a lot of them <laughs> if yeah. you come here because, like I said, it's uh, it's been very popular. Um, Let's let's talk also about speaking of popular. I mean, like the Celtos is to us here. I think for the Kia USA portfolio, it's got to be the Telluride. I mean, I remember when the car. You know, we we did the live broadcast announcing the results uh, for the World Car Awards, which was really exciting. And you know, what what a lot of people don't realize is that we didn't know the results either. I mean, they were literally coming out from KPMG at the time, so we got really excited when when the Telluride won for for lots of reasons. And then we had. Uh, uh, Michael, of course, who joined us uh, for, for the reaction, and he said something which stayed with everybody, you know, which is uh, the typical questions that were coming from our jurors were, when can we have it in our market? And he was like, look, we can't make enough right now for just the US even. So it's that popular. When you, yeah. when you, when you set out to sort of design this car, um, what was your, you know, what was the thought behind it for you? And then also, of course, the fact that, uh, you know, did you ever expect it to to be this kind of popular? Well, you know, when we set out uh, uh, to design it, um, at the time, this was around 2015 or so, and at the time, a lot of SUV trends, at least in America, were trying to get them more sleek and more sporty and actually more car-like, to be yeah. honest with you. And we felt like we wanted to do something different and go in a different direction. And a lot of our uh, team members are, are super car enthusiasts. And um, we all love uh, some of the old, uh, iconic, um, original SUVs, such as like Range Rover and, um, let's see, uh, the original Ford Bronco, perhaps. Mercedes G wagon, um, some of these very uh, I iconic uh, uh, vehicles. We thought there was 
there was something fresh about it again, you know, what goes around comes around type of thing. And so we came up with this uh, tagline to design around, which was called Big, Bold, and Boxy. <laughs> and that's sort of kind of drove all of our uh, decisions, at least on the, on the exterior uh, wise. So, yeah, that's kind of what we set out to do. And then the second part of your question about um, do we expect, you know, the, the, the reaction? I mean, we, we in our, our gut instinct felt like we'd done something good, but we never, ex or at least I did the type of uh, reaction that it's got um, to date. Yeah. So while you were talking earlier, I just pulled up an image of, uh, you know, the concept car. And right mm -hmm. now we're looking at, uh, at at nice moving images of the uh, of the production vehicle. Um, two things, you know, the fact that it was so true to the concept, the, the production mm -hmm. car, and then uh, you know, in, in some cases it kind of almost took that and made it more extreme. You know, you had even more uh, emotional sort of or evocative features, like you know, you changed the headlamp from what was on the concept, which now you can argue was a little more conventional, to what's really different. You know, this vertical stack with the with the orange DRL um, the, the fact that you wanted people to sort of look at it and say hey what is that it looks different you know um, was that was that intentional or did that kind of evolve out of the process um, I think it was a, a bit of an evolution uh, of the process um, some of the things that we uh, that were on the on the, on the front of the concept car, were difficult for us to get in a, a production setting with uh, just feasibility and some metal stamping, especially around the uh, headlight of the of the concept. So we we had to change it a little bit, but um, I think in hindsight, I think what we changed uh, it actually it, it did make it a bit more unique. And I, I really do like how we went more vertical with the headlights yeah. and. Um, Obviously, the orange DRLs is quite distinctive. Um, in armor, it's funny, you know, funny story with the orange DRLs because um, in our market, only the top uh, model trim has those. And some of the other model uh, trim levels have just white. So we have this internal debate um, right now about like, what what is best or what people pref, uh, prefer so i would love to hear like some of your your uh your uh, um listeners if if they prefer the white or the orange do you do you have both uh in uh well actually it's just i'm sorry it's just the the um american market but if they had seen if some of your listeners have seen both i would love to hear their uh, their opinion well, on that car, actually, I've always just seen the orange one too. So, you know, it's interesting mm. actually to know what people think because yeah. we have talked about the, the Telluride so much uh, since about November last year, I think, uh, you know, and um, and especially in the run up to the, the, the point where I think in February, we made the announcement here at the Delhi show actually for the shortlist uh, for the finalists, the top five, uh, if you will, and the top 10 in the world car category. And then, of course, you know, subsequent to that, we had the top three announcement. Uh, it got a lot of press and I can tell you even right now, the, the number one message is uh, or the number one question I'm being asked to, to put to you, when can we get it here in India? So, mm -hmm. uh, and all right, uh, white or orange uh, guys, you got to tell us what you think. Uh, please react to that. It's a nice question and, uh, you know, we'd love to know what you think. I'm starting to see already both. So, uh, the question is about just the DRLs, not the body color. Uh, so, tell us, tell us what you like guys because we're seeing, I think, uh, Orange DRL looks lovely. Okay, so there's lots of, we'll, we'll come back to those comments. Uh, but, you know, the, the reason why I think, uh, again, I, I was at the New York show, I remember a um, couple of years ago or last year, I'm getting my, my timelines muddled up. But I remember when the car first came out, uh, after having, you know, done the concept a little bit earlier than that, everybody was wowed by it. And it was, it was polarizing in the sense, you know, you either had people who just loved it for its boxy, you know, big brute sort of shape. And there are others who were like, well, hold on, everybody else is going swoopy and doing crossovers and, you know, what's going on with that. Uh, but, but the one thing that kind of stood out was that even if you compare to what Kia had been doing, 
this was, you know, it wasn't exactly something that fit into your SUV family. Now you're starting to see those hints coming out in some of the other SUV family models. You know, the Seltos wasn't out then. The new uh, Sorento hadn't come out then. So, mm -hmm. uh, so, so, you know, it was like a real test case, isn't it, for you? It was, yeah, for sure. It was, uh, it was definitely the first uh, sort of departure. It was a brand new vehicle, obviously, and a brand new sort of uh, design philosophy. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was sort of a, a new direction for us. But um, yeah, we just felt like this this back to basic, um, uh, big bold boxy, but also having some design restraint. And, uh, you know, less is more and uh, sort of like the simplicity is the ultimate sophistication is what they say it's sometimes, I think. Um, so, so we, we wanted, wanted it, uh, you know, S SUV, SUV uh, uh, inspired, inspired, but we also wanted it to have a, a, a bit of sophistication about it as well. And I, I, I think we pulled that off and, and I, I, hope, I hope we have. Oh. I mean, you most certainly have, even the popularity of the car, I think that's, that's testimony in itself. Uh, yeah, I think orange is the popular answer. Everybody says they love it. It's also because, you know, in India, we don't have orange DRLs on anything. Um, I mm. remember, in fact, a couple of years ago, it was more than a couple of years ago, maybe, uh, we were at the World Car Test Drives in, in uh, Pasadena, and uh, we had the Cadenza, which had the orange DRLs. And I remember mm -hmm. being fascinated by that because I know in the U.S. market, you have to have the orange indicator on the corner of the headlamp unit uh, by law. But uh, I was like, hold on, nobody's done this before. And it's just kind of standing out to me. You know, it, 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 it was also a really beautiful looking car. So it kind of, you know, went with the whole design. The interior on that car was really nice, too. So uh, to me, that's that's, I think, one of the times when everybody already had taken note of Kia design becoming very attractive, maybe over the past decade. Uh, and then some. But that car for me always stands out for its orange DRLs. And then when I saw it on the Telluride, I was like, hey, this could be a thing. Yeah. 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 Maybe, Maybe you're, you're ahead of your time. time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always okay with that. It's better than being behind, right? So uh, the, the, the obvious next question is about the, the tiger nose grill. We've got a lot of people asking about that as well. Uh, it goes, uh, you know, very beautifully on, on all the cars. It's also amazing how, how nicely it kind of, or how congruous it is. On, on so many different body styles. Um, mm -hmm. I, of course, know the antecedents to that, but for the sake of our viewers, talk us through why that remains so important for you. Well, I think it's a, it's a big differentiator. And, you know, it's, um, it, it, gives, it gives our identity to our face. And I think a face of a vehicle uh, for each manufacturer is very important because it's just, it, uh, when you see a, when you see a vehicle coming at you from down the road, um, it really it, it immediately communicates, you know, that who that car's make, maker is, and um, so I think it's it's uh, it's very uh, um, important for just uh, communication purposes and to um, and, and also it it gives it gives some some character and some uh, some unique personality to the to the front face as well oh it's also very good looking i think and it like i said it's amazing how it uh is something that goes with you know everything from us from a stinger to obviously the telluride um sure let's go back now a little bit uh, in time if you will uh talk us through the importance of well first let's just talk about kia design the, the center in, in in irvine um it started off as being a sort of an offshoot to Kia design in Korea, I'm sure. But, the, you know, it's mm -hmm. really built in scale. There's a whole lot of global product, uh, production models that you guys are doing out of there. I had a chance to visit there last November. Uh, it's a huge facility. Um, so, so tell us a little bit about it and also the team that you work with. Yeah, um, we've got a team of about 50, uh, just over 50 employees. And that's made up of um, obviously designers, both interior and exterior. We have uh, some color and trim uh, experts as well. We've got um, both clay modeling and digital mo uh, modelers uh, working for us. Um, so yeah, we're uh, we're it's not a huge 
huge team. It's not small, but it's not really a, a huge team. But um, we seem to uh, have uh, a lot of success and uh, work well together. And we try to keep sort of a sort of a uh, family atmosphere hmm. at work, if you will. And a lot of times we uh, work together, but we also play as well. A lot of um, a lot of our team. Uh, surfs or mountain bikes or uh, uh, sometimes we we have like a potluck lunch um, together so yeah we uh, we work hard but we play hard as well it's also a really impressive facility we got a picture of the uh, the, the building uh, you know the front in fact when I see sometimes some of the uh, the, the product pictures that are released by, you know by the Kia press uh, I'm like hey I know where that's been shot because you know it, it creates a really nice backdrop for the cars too yeah, it's a, it's, and it's quite distinctive, especially the front uh, canopy and overhang with that big angled area. Yeah. Um, it it makes a statement, and hopefully it makes a statement much like our, our cars do as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that we know that they do because uh, they've been growing in popularity. And in many ways, I think uh, design has played probably the most crucial role there. But uh, before I take any credit away from, you know, your colleagues in the other departments, uh, the, the increasing sort of difference that we've seen over the last decade, as the cars got so good looking, you know, the, the, fit, the finish, the quality, everything kept, just kept getting enhanced with each iteration, with each generation. The same was also true of the, the driving, the handling. We're seeing a lot more dynamic sort of products coming from you. Uh, the Telluride, I mean, it's, it's huge, but the way it drives is, is great. Um, the fact that you know both the design uh, prowess and the engineering prowess could kind of keep up with each other or keep pace with each other that was important mm -hmm. isn't it oh it's very important and um, I'm sure you know uh, Albert Bierman yeah who joined us a few years ago from BMW and uh, I think I think a lot of the credit for that driving dynamics sort of matching the, the design can be uh, credited to him and, and his team and what he's been able to do since he joined the company. Oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, we, we talk about him often enough in our circles, I know. So uh, I was going to mention his name and you've done that anyway. You know, we've, we've seen that in a lot of cars at both Hyundai and Kia, we've seen the, the absolute difference from the steering to, you know, the, the, the ride quality, of course, the handling. Mm -hmm. So so that's great to see. Uh, the fact that it also now permeates into all the cars, I mean, we're not just seeing one Stinger project or we're not just seeing the flagship from Genesis. You know, it's, it's all the cars where we see that drivability, you know, that fun factor is right at the front of that. And then you add in, you know, the fact that they're also super attractive, really good looking. Uh, the impression that it creates for the brand, you know, it's kind of lifted the Kia brand so much. Um, now that you have that, how do you, it's like a responsibility. How do you then sort of say that, all right, now I'm, I'm not starting from here anymore. I'm, I'm starting much higher. Um, does it put more pressure to create an even more impressive product next? Uh, maybe a little bit, but uh, I mean, that's, that's our job. That's what we do. And that's, yeah. that's why we, you know, get up every morning and, and, and it's why we're motivated. Um, so I, I think we're, we're always trying to, uh, you know, do better and uh, sort of break through in other ways. Um, yeah, maybe it's uh, compared to, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, it w where it was easier to make big strides. Um, maybe it won't be quite the case, but I think definitely we're always striving for, for improvement and um, trying to, uh, you know, delight and surprise our customers in, in new ways, always. Power to surprise. I mean, that's in your tagline anyway. So I think you've been doing that really well. Um, okay. Some of the concept cars that have come out of uh, Kia Design America, uh, you know, we've certainly noticed them and, you know, we've been excited by them as well. Uh, if you could sort of take us to some of your key, uh, you know, maybe they're not recent, maybe even some of the older designs. Uh, what for you is like a real standout? Yeah, well, for me, um, you know, when I first joined the company, which is uh, quite some time uh, ago now, um, um, 15 years ago, I think the first project I worked on was the 
uh, concept car, the, the Soul concept car, which was debuted at um, Detroit, I believe, in 2005 or 2006, I think. And um, that was my first project uh, arriving at Kia. And then it went straight into production, basically uh, fairly, fairly close to the, uh, to the concept. And so that one, that one sticks out for me just because it's, uh, I think at the time, if you think about where Kia was prior to that and then what that vehicle did, it, you know, it really gave, gave a lot of character and a lot of personality and it wasn't just an appliance, uh, <laughs> uh, transportation appliance. It was like, it really had personality and it had yeah. this fun, quirky quality about it and, um, so that that for sure uh, is a standout standout for me. And, and we're talking about the first generation, uh, which you know at the time, of course, that 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 shape, the characteristic shape that it came out with, uh, again just got noticed so much. And then you did all these interesting other concepts, right? Like you had the the trackster and the trailster. Uh, yeah. What, what is that about? Well, we just we just thought, you know, um, at the time it was it was so successful. And we felt like we could build on that and, and almost think about it as a, a mini sub brand of, of Kia Motors, if you will, and have variations of the soul. So yeah, we did for a couple of years there, we had uh, several variations of, uh, of the soul in concept form, which were, which were very f fun. I wish a couple of those had <laughs> had been uh, green lighted for production <laughs> especially the tail lights on those were really cool we're again looking at some of those pictures right now on the screen and then of course we come to the new third generation car uh, which was also the second generation of the ev model um, enough and more has been said about it it's of course the 2020 world urban car of the year what a lot of people tend to forget is that the the non-ev or the you know the ice version last year was the first runner-up in the same category and it actually just lost to the Suzuki Jimny by two points. So, you know, it mm. could very well have been World Urban Car last year too. Um, th you know, building on an icon, because by now the Soul is an icon. It's hugely popular. I mean, in markets in Europe, for example, they're only buying the EV now in any case. Um, once you have that kind of status built in, I talked about the iconic shape. How much can you mess with? How much can you say that, all right, I'm going to throw this out and do something new? And then how much are you like, okay, I can't mess with this part? Yeah. It's tough when you have an icon with, for any manufacturer as a designer. It's a challenge. It's almost more of a challenge than if you have a completely uh, white, clean sheet of paper. Um, yeah, so you always have to. It's always like a balancing act, you know, of of like how much you you want to change it so that it looks new and fresh, but you don't want to throw out what what the original iconic version had that everyone sort of aspired to. So it's, it's definitely a, a challenge for a design team uh, to, to redo a, an icon, iconic uh, vehicle. So we're seeing, we're seeing the car on our screens right now. Uh, the front end is where, you know, the big change was. You've got a completely new sort of, you know, headlamp, the grill. Um, it's a lot more subtle and it's almost more sophisticated and and less sort of brat like like the last car was uh, and yet when you look at it from a mile you know it's a soul um, yeah the, the the colors you know the two-tone roof uh the the use of the led lighting especially at the rear i mean you know with that really interesting shape that you've given the car it's so distinctive um uh, what part of it excites you the most the new design yeah i think uh, you, you touched on it with the front you know the if you go back to the very original soul it was uh, almost a little bit cartoonish and very uh, playful, um, which was which was interesting. But we sort of wanted to mature it and and have it grow up a bit, and so we did. It was intentional to sort of sort of uh, make the front a bit more uh, sophisticated. But then uh, some of the things you know we didn't want to mess with we that profile and the uh, sort of the um, box uh, hatch style look, you know, we, 
that was very much something that we wanted to retain because that's sort of the essence of of the um, soul iconic uh, iconicness, if you will. Oh yeah, and and you know the new uh, EV drives really well. I've I've driven it quite extensively, so I can vouch for that. Uh, we would love to have that here in India too. I can tell you and. I know that some of your colleagues from Kia India are watching, so they're probably sick of hearing me saying that. Um, all right, so again, lots of people are, by the way, reacting to all of these pictures, and um, you know they're they're asking about uh, a lot of things that they want you to talk about. So uh, I think the the one thing that kind of stayed with me is that uh, there was a question just a short while earlier about when when you design something, it's obviously a creative expression, uh, and and do you a need inspiration to be able to make that expression happen and if yes what is your inspiration well that's a good question um i think as designers we're always in inspired but i don't know that um you need to go out and, and and search for it i think it's around you every day uh in your daily life or even outside in, in nature um i think i think everyone's different but um i think just, I, I'm inspired by other other designs, other designers. Uh, sometimes I see something that someone did, whether it's a car or whether it's a watch or a, a shoe or a belt or uh, a faucet. And I'm like, that is so nice. I'm jealous I didn't think of that or come up with that design. So I don't know, many, many different uh, areas where we take inspiration from, I believe. All right. Um, before I run out of time, I have to ask you about some of the other concept cars. Um, the Habanero concept stands out in my mind. Uh, and of course, the, the, the Stinger, the GT4 uh, Stinger, you know, for its, uh, for its mm. shape, for its color. Uh, so, yeah, I have to ask you about that one because, you know, I saw the car. We, we, you had it parked in the foyer of the uh, design center when we were visiting. Uh, so I got to see it in the flesh for the first time. Uh, Tell, tell me about that car and the, the yeah, sort of story I behind it. Yeah, I love that car. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, a couple years old now, but I uh, wish that one would have uh, gotten a green light as well. But um, that one also has uh, sort of this um, very low slung sexiness about it. Very simple though, as well. It's very restrained, very clean surfaces, not a lot of. Uh, um, uh, features or lines or shapes on the side is very, um, very flowing, simple, uh, almost elegant um, uh, shape and very nice proportions. So I, I, uh, I also uh, walk by that every day and and <laughs> and look at it and admire it. And um, so I, yeah, I really like that. And then the the uh, the habanero was was uh, something more recent that we did, yeah. and um, very uh, take on um, on a electric vehicle sort of soft rotor, off road soft road, uh, and how those two characters can come together to create a, a futuristic. Um, uh, design and uh, so it's I think it's very um, very it very unique it's probably a bit polarizing but I kind of like that it's it's sort of uh, testing the boundaries out there a bit and uh, I also I'm not sure if you have a picture of it but the interior oh yeah of that goal we, is uh, we're looking at a video of it right now uh, driving on yeah. your uh, proving ground in uh, in the in Mojave and um, sure. I was going to ask you the doors and the interior trim. Uh, yeah. How did you decide to go that way? Is it is it also to do with you know the fact that it's kind of the name of the chili pepper? Is that where the red comes from? That's where the red comes from. Yes, and and also we had this feeling that you know the exterior was kind of technical and had a it was kind of a neutral color, but it had to act this sort of one bar over the rear. But when we opened the doors, we wanted it to look like it was like glowing from the inside. And so we decided mm -hmm. to do like everything in this sort of reddish, orange, chili pepper um, color. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah. it really, I think, especially when you see it in person and you, and you open the door, it, it really uh, evokes an emotional response. Oh, I remember seeing that at one of the motor shows. I think it was New York again. And absolutely right. I mean, I, I vouch for that. That uh, It was like this, oh, kind of moment when you opened up the car because uh, you don't expect to see that when, when you look at the outside. It's kind of, like you said, technical is the right word. Um, yeah. All right. So there's uh, a lot of people asking about uh, the, you know, some of uh, people. Some of the people are asking about where and how you started your career. Uh, so I know we're kind of jumping around a little bit here, but but tell us about that. I mean, before you joined Kia as well, you had you had a substantial amount of time that you spent with GM. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I had uh, quite a few years there. I don't want to tell you exactly how many because I'd be dating <laughs> myself. But um, yeah, I had a good career there, and towards the end of my career at uh, at GM, I worked a lot on the on Cadillac and um, the whole resurgence of uh, art and science at the time. This is this is quite some time ago now, but uh, they were really trying to shed their old traditional image of of the typical Cadillac buyer and really uh, start out out into a, a new direction. And so, to be part of that. Renaissance and that team that put that together um, was was very uh, uh, rewarding time in my uh, career. So, what's like a standout design for you, Cadillac? Uh, something that you can look back and say that you're happy with? Well, I think the CTS, which was was the original, the first gen CTS, is is something I worked on, and you know, like I alluded to, it was it was the first vehicle that really. Uh, shed this this old traditional image of a typical uh, uh, Cadillac design and a ca Cadillac buyer as well. So um, yeah, for me that was that was pretty significant uh, uh, vehicle that I worked on. Yeah. Well, we've got a picture of it on the screen now, the first generation, and I know that the CTS has evolved ever since. But what's interesting is that the silhouette uh, still kind of carries that forward in a way, um, and it all started with you. Yeah, yeah. I kind of feel like um, uh, sometimes I, I think about that original CTS and what it did for Cadillac or how it changed Cadillac and then how the the soul with Kia, how that started a, a significant change in Kia. So I feel uh, very fortunate and blessed to be part of a team that that uh, worked on both of those. It's that helped uh, really sort of transform a, a brand. You're, you're totally underplaying your you know significant contribution, and I <laughs> totally respect that. Um, you know, you can argue that in many ways the Telluride today is also doing something similar because we're almost seeing uh, Kia you know evolve into becoming like this SUV heavy brand. I mean, you've got um, mm -hmm. the, the the Kia uh, Telluride being the biggest. You got the Sorento that just sort of has been unveiled in March. We haven't seen the car yet in the flesh or driven it. Looks really nice. And then you know you got uh, I, I guess the, the 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 Sportage would be the next one to go in for a generation change. Seltos. And then you know here in India we at the at the Delhi show we got to see the uh, Sonnet concept, which is really going to be the tiniest. You know, shares a lot with the venue. Uh, that that sized car. Um, is it difficult to? create that span of vehicle, each one having its own identity and yet tying them together? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's always a challenge. But, uh, you know, that's, that's our job. That's what we uh, need to do. And, you know, with, with, the, with the demand for these types of vehicles, um, you know, our customers want it and they, they, they want different variations and different categories categories or sizes of those types of vehicles and different price ranges as well. So yeah, it's, it's our, it's, it's our job to uh, do what we can to make sure that they, they offer something uh, distinct from one another, but have maybe a little bit of uh, th a thread of the same DNA that's woven uh, through all of them to keep them sort of as part of a family. One quick last mention about a concept car is this one, the one that's coming up on the screen now. It's the Q concept. Uh, tell us a little about. It. Yeah, that was that's going back a few years now too. But that was uh, the intent was a um, electric or hybrid uh, type vehicle 
very um, uh, futuristic at the time, uh, very sleek. Um, it was a four place vehicle. Um, and yeah, it was, it was really, uh, uh, um, the intent was to, uh, um, stake out a new area for Kia. Uh, at the time that was probably before we had, um, hybrid or electric vehicles offered in production. So it was really sort of, um, showing the world like what we could do or how a Kia would look in the future if we had, um, a vehicle like that. All right. Well, I, I have to say that the time it came out, it, it certainly, you know, looked like nothing else that was around at the time. And so you're right. I think in terms of some of the lines, especially some of the, the lighting treatment as well, we picked up some of those yeah. cues in your subsequent production cars. Um, all right. We've got to quickly spend a few minutes talking about stuff that's outside of, uh, you know, Kia and your, and your day job, as it were, uh, Tom, because I know that right now, of course, things are very different. And, um, are you still being able to, to keep in touch with your team and do some amount of the uh, design work for the future models? Yes, we are. Um, you know, obviously, we, uh, our facility is closed. We can't be working on, um, on, on full-size clay models or scale models, which we normally do. Um, the good news is, you know, in the past couple of years, we've been doing a lot of digital sculpting. And so, um, because of that, we've got our, our teams, all our designers are set up at home. We've got our, uh, our digital sculptors set up at home as well. And so we're able to design and, and build models, uh, from home now. And, uh, it was a little awkward at first, I have to admit, but, um, in the, in the past couple of weeks, um, I feel like it's like we're, we're getting our, our rhythm and our, and our, uh, our groove and, and working quite well and doing a lot of FaceTime and Zoom and, and um, uh, sharing. Uh, we have a, a confidential um, software we, where we can share the, the images of the model and spin it around and all talk together on how to make it better and what changes we need to make and engineering issues that we need to uh, change to address and that type of thing. So we're actually uh, getting getting up speed and uh, I'm working from home. All right. There's an interesting question that's come in from Sanket. He's asking about uh, what university you went to and what tips do you have for potential students who want to get into the, the same uh, field as you? Yes. I went to Center for Creative Studies in Detroit, Michigan. Um, it's, it's now, now it's been now renamed to Center College, College of Creative Studies, I believe. It's, it's still CCS, CCS, but slight name change. Um, yeah, yeah, I, uh, you know, when, when I was growing up, up and I was even, even in high school, school, I didn't even know what car design, design. I, didn't I didn't even know there was such a thing as car design, to be honest, honest with you. you. Mm -hmm. And, and after, after I graduated from high school, I, um, like, like in, in high school, school I was always interested in art and took art classes and that type of thing. And my mom was an artist, so I sort of got, you know, the art uh, gene from her. And my father was the car guy in the house. You know, he or he loved cars. He wasn't he didn't work in the industry, but he was just very passionate about cars. So. After, After I graduated from high school, school I, took I took a class at a uh, community, community college in industrial, industrial design. design. And, and the gentleman that taught it was a retired car designer from Chrysler. And, and he opened, opened my eyes to like this field. And, and um, the rest he, of the uh, <laughs> he sent me down to, to CCS for a, like a uh, student show. And, and I walked in there and I saw all the work on the walls and it's, it's almost, almost like, like a light switch, switch went off and I was like, that is what I need to do. It's, it's like, like I can combine like my passion for art and cars and, and, and bring them together, which I had no idea I could do before. And um, I saw this, all these students work and uh, renderings and models and I was like, 
that's, that's it. That's, that's what I'm doing. doing. I'm gonna. I, I need to find a way of how how to, how to do that. So, and, and as far as tips, um, I mean, I would search out um, uh, local uh, universities or colleges that have um, art degrees or art backgrounds or art classes. Um, if you love cars, draw cars, sketch. Um, Actually, Actually, online now, there's a lot of things that people, people can do um, to, to to find out about about about, um, about, about car, car design. design. I, know I know an ex colleague of mine started a I believe it's a channel on YouTube on, on how to design cars and tutorials and education. So I think there's a lot out, out there available for aspiring car car designers. That's true. I think now especially there's a lot of material. Um, uh, you know, when you are talking about getting inspiration, and, and clearly you got that even at the, at the time when you were studying, um, to to sort of break away from it all, uh, what, what's your what's what's the kind of pursuits you like to to get into? I know you've shared some pictures with me, so I'm going to share those now. Uh, and okay. it's great to know that you're a dog person because you know that totally fits in with me as well. So tell us tell us about your pets. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Our, our family, my, my wife and, and daughter and I, we love uh, Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. It's a breed of, of dogs. And um, uh, yeah, we, we got one maybe 15 years ago and, and fell in love with it. And then it, it's kind of like potato chips. You can't just have one. So we, just, we, needed, we needed more. And um, Yeah, you got pictures so, of them now on the screen. So yeah. they're adorable. Yeah, yeah, so, so our, our family, family uh, um, uh, loves, loves those dogs, dogs and uh, um, the, the last few that we've gotten, gotten we've gotten through a, um, a rescue, rescue organization. organization. Um, okay. So uh, it it seems, seems to uh, seems, seems to work out, out well, but yeah, yeah they're they're, they're just, just a great great breed of, of dogs. And the other thing which I know that you like to do is to uh, to race bikes. I mean, you spend time on bikes when you can. Mm -hmm. I do, yeah. Um, not as often as I like, but I just do it as a um, as a hobby. Nothing too serious, but I love uh, motorcycles, uh, road racing especially. Um, so yeah, I I, uh, I get out there when I can, and um, yeah, it's great. It's great fun. Great adrenaline adrenaline uh, thrill. So I can I can see a whole bunch of KTM's on the track there, but uh, there's a picture of this uh, of a white bike, which I'm guessing is like from a GoPro on your helmet. Uh, oh, what yes. what is that? What what bike is that? That we is couldn't figure it out. By the way, we tried to figure it out, but we couldn't. You couldn't figure it out. Okay, yeah. um, it's a 1970 BMW um, R75 slash five. Ah, okay. Well, it looks looks really really nice. I'm gonna then. At some point, I'm going to ask you to send me a picture of the whole bike because it looks really nice. Uh, the, uh, you also surf, I'm, I'm guessing, from this picture because uh, there we go. We have a picture of you surfing. We have a picture of you with a guitar. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah. of course, all, all the biking. So tell me a little bit about that, too. Yeah, um, I love guitars. Uh, I, I, I like playing. I'm not super good at it. Um, I think I mentioned to you earlier that I feel like I've been a, a beginner guitarist for like 25 years, <laughs> but um, I I, uh, I dabble in it. It's fun. It's fun to learn. I also like just the, I just appreciate the instruments and themselves. Um, I've got a couple of older uh, vintage guitars which I like. I've got one here. I'm not sure if you can see it, but this one is. Uh, can you see this? Yeah. Let me go this is a, a this is a 1959 Gibson ES225, and uh, it's in it's in pretty good shape. It plays plays really nice. It sounds great through an amp. It's got um, these these P90 pickups, which sound very good, clean, like a nice um, jazz tone. But um, you turn this baby up, and it can it can uh, make some good rock sounds as well. So it's very uh, kind of does everything. 
Love this guitar. My well, obvious question I was going to ask you is, is it plugged in right now to the amp? <laughs> it, it's, it's not. It's not? Well. It's not. I, don't, I would be too shy to play it for you anyways. We'd, well, maybe we, we save that for another day, right? I mean, okay. hopefully I can convince you to play it for us at some point. But uh, the last thing I will talk to you about is your absolute uh, fascination. I think it's well known, and especially amongst uh, some of my U.S. colleagues, um, is you're a Porsche fan, as many of yeah. us are. Uh, were you excited that the that the Taycan also was a double winner at the uh, World Car Awards? Yes, very much so. I'm I make anxious to uh, to see that car uh, on the road and drive it one day. And I, I, you know, it seems like it's getting great great reviews and um, very cool. Yeah, yeah. Hats off to to Porsche for for what they've done with that vehicle. But but talk us through your uh, fascination with the brand. You also owned a few. Uh, in the past, um, so tell us about it. I mean, I, I have a picture now coming up of uh, I think that's a yellow 911 in in your garage. Um, yeah. T- and then I'm also going to pull out the pictures that we spoke about earlier, which is uh, the the restoration project with uh, yeah, with I've, the olive green 964. Yeah, I've uh, many Porsches over the years. Um, pretty much. Every vintage of 911, I think I've owned at one point. Um, I've got this the newer, uh, the yellow uh, um, vehicle. But um, the project I have going on right now is a, it's a 1994 uh, 964 uh, version of the 911, and it's a wide body, which is a rear a rear car here in the U.S. And uh, it's a project. It's almost complete. It's been going on for almost two years now. Um, painted it a non-original 964 color, but but a, a vintage Porsche color from the late 70s called Olive Green, which is a non-metallic, sort of like, I don't know how to describe it, kind of army green, kind of pea soup. Uh, we're seeing, very, uh, yeah, we're seeing it on our color. screen now, so... Yep, we got it up on the screen. It looks it looks great, and the white wall tires are those white wall tires? No, they're not. Hang on. Let me Maybe it's just the the rim. Yeah, the the uh, rim looks. The like, rims are are kind of this white, yeah, silver white color. Silver. No, it looks yeah. it looks beautiful. And uh, why did you go with that color? I just wanted something unique. Uh, I you know, the 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 time when those nine six. Fours were built between, let's say, 90 and, and 94. Um, most of them were were black, white, silver, red, um, maybe a few blue, but, you know, it was pretty uh, 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 limited. Um, so I just wanted something unique, something, something different. And um, I saw some guys use this color on uh on some newer porsches as a paint to sample uh spec and i thought it just looked amazing so uh very striking yeah yeah and something then, fun and different it's very different and you know i'd love to see the car in the flesh the uh the other one is the cayenne the picture of the, the martini mm. uh li- livery which anyway gets my attention straight away uh, i remember quite some time back a few years ago uh, we had a, I had a Boxster with the uh, Martini uh, racing livery uh, at uh, at Pebble Beach, and uh, oh, nice. and you know being at Pebble Beach, uh, I thought I was feeling thrilled driving out in that car, and then suddenly I realized that you know at Pebble Beach that's like driving a Ford Taurus, but <laughs> but it's the livery that got all the attention, you know a lot of people yeah. stopped and asked about it, so that looks very impressive. Uh, when did you do this? I did that pretty much last year, last fall. I did that, and um, there's there was another one that was done that I was inspired by, by a guy in Vancouver, mm-hmm. and he did it in this in the Rothmans ah, um, yeah. uh, livery, much like the um, 959 was done uh, back in the late 80s, and it just looked fantastic, and so. Uh, so I did something similar, but I, I changed the livery, the, the delivery to martini, and, and made it made it a new unique uh, uh, shape. Um, and yeah, just 
took that, you know, the original Cayenne was sort of unloved when it first uh, came out. <laughs> yeah. I always, I always thought, you know, it wasn't so bad. And I think once you lift, put a lift kit on that thing and put some bigger tire, big, bigger knobby tires on it and some, some off-road lamps, it looks, I think it looks pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I mean, this picture that I have right now with uh, all that mud splashing and, yeah, oh, it looks, looks really, really cool. I have to agree. Um, <laughs> so the last thing, of course, is the, uh, is the you know, staying all American, I suppose. Uh, the picture I have of your charger. Uh, you know, for many of us here in India, you know, we have, we have Cayennes, but we've never had the American muscle cars here, except for the yeah. Mustang, you know, the, the latest generation, which did launch here in limited numbers a couple of years ago. Uh, but but otherwise we've never really had our brush with American muscle. Uh, this looks really great. I mean, you got to tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, it's a, a 1969 Dodge Charger. Um, I I bought it on eBay. I want to say about seven or eight years ago, mm -hmm. and it had been painted. The the person that owned it painted it and did the interior and did the motor. Um, but uh, when I got it, I changed it. I put different wheels and tires on it. I had a, um, a Hotchkiss suspension system done on it, which lowered it down a little bit and made it uh, handle better and safer. It was it was sort of a handful when I, when I first got it because <laughs> cars in those eras of that size didn't handle so well. And, <laughs> Also put some proper brakes on it so the thing would would actually stop, and um, yeah, just tinkered it, tinkered with it uh, throughout uh, the years. And um, I gotta say, you know, I've I've been blessed to own some nice vehicles in my past, but driving that car around, even here in America, got way more attention than <laughs> anything else I've ever owned. <laughs> I can understand why it looks it looks really the the part and you know very very menacing, um, yeah. in, in many ways. And you know I have to tell you that we're, we're out of time. I know uh, there's a lot of people who have at the time I think you picked up the guitar. I had been so busy with our conversation, I hadn't been looking at the comments. A lot of people were like, "Come on, you got to play for us." And then uh, <laughs> you know people requesting you to sort of sketch something for us if you if you think you have the time. Well, I'm not really the way I'm set up right now. I'm not really. Uh we really set up to, to do that, and the, also the guitar is... Uh, oh, that's not plugged not, in, I know. It's not plugged in, but I can strum a little bit, just so you can kind of hear, like... It just sounds, it sounds, really, it sounds really nice. I don't know if some of your listeners are music people or not, but... Uh, just a great, a great guitar. That's a nice sound. No, it is. It's got a very classical sound, and uh, you know what? I think... Uh, as they say, you've got to save some things for the next time, uh, as we've already <laughs> mentioned once. So maybe the sketching part we can do when we uh, meet in person. I do hope that you know the current crisis uh, passes us by sooner than later, and, and, and that happens, because for now, there's no travel happening anywhere. But, uh, but the next time you, know, you are here in our neck of the woods, or if I'm traveling to where you are, uh, maybe that's when we can make that happen. That would be great. Yeah, I would love that. No, it's been it's been great talking with you, Tom. Today, I think uh, you know we we met briefly. I remember during the uh, the Celtos premiere, but that was you know a big like you said it was a big day and there was lots happening. Uh, yes. You of course made the presentation, the design presentation on the Celtos for us that day. I remember, but uh, but this has been fun. This has been truly uh, you know enriching. Yeah, I had a, I had a lot of fun too. Hope you enjoyed it. Very much. In fact, I've kind of hogged all of your time and asked you just a few questions. I know so people are going to be a little bit mad at me. But, uh, but just having you on the show, I think, you know, giving everybody else here, especially a chance to listen to you for the first time, um, it's, it's been great. And so, like I said, offer is open uh, next time you're in India or if I'm, you know, in, in Irvine, then we've got to, got to do this again and bring you back on the show. Sounds good, Sid. Great. It was excellent uh, talking to you. Have a great day. Please stay safe and have a great yeah. weekend ahead, too. Okay, you as well. Take care. Bye-bye now. Take care. Thanks. Okay, so that was Tom Kearns, the man who heads Kia Design in America and who has been responsible for some of Kia's modern-day icons, cars that have really turned around the company's reputation in so many ways. The Soul, what a powerful model line that has been, now in its third generation and still very much uh, the, the icon. Also, remember, 
the winner of the 2020 World Urban Car of the Year. And then you've got the Telluride, the car that we've all been clamoring after. We've talked so much about it. We certainly want to see it here in India and, you know, we can keep sort of dreaming of that happening. But uh, its popularity in North America means that, uh, firstly, they've got to still satisfy the demand of that market. It also sells in the Middle East, remember, and uh, we've got to wait and see if Kia India. Guys, you're listening to us. You know it. A lot of people want it. So think about it and bring it to us if you can. Uh, the Telluride will certainly be something that we will continue to talk about. For those of you who haven't seen our uh, exclusive review of the Telluride, the first drive impressions I had, please go to our uh, YouTube channel right here as you are on it right now. Go ahead to youtube.com slash car and bike and check out our Kia Telluride story. And you know what? A little bit of a little teaser for you. The car that I will have for you on the car and bike show this weekend is the new Soul EV. Yes, that review is something that I had been saving and uh, you will have that from me. I still see a lot of you are going ahead with lots of questions. Uh, great show, says Kushbu. Thank you, Kushbu. Uh, it means a lot coming from you. And uh, American more American designers or no more American designers on the show. I'm misreading that. Thanks, Tom. Nice listening to you. It was great hearing. And you know what? I'm just glad that we could bring uh, his views to you because this is the kind of interaction that we rarely get a chance to have and which is why it's fun. And, uh, you know, I know that we'll always stay grounded and we'll, of course, bring you stuff that's relevant to you as well. And so uh, tomorrow on the show, we have uh, another one of our industry leaders here in India lined up. So let me run that teaser for you so that, uh, well, you know what's coming up. So I promise you it wasn't planned this way that we had Kia today and we have Hyundai tomorrow. But yes, we do have Hyundai India tomorrow. Tarun Garg has been uh, at the company now for a relatively short time, but comes with a huge amount of experience from his days at Maruti Suzuki. And there's plenty to talk about with him because remember that uh, if we're excited about some of the new cars coming from Kia, we're also excited about the new i20 and uh, you know so much more that could follow. Of course, all of that depends on when things start to normalize. There is some talk about production resuming from Monday, so we'll wait and see about that. And this is, of course, for the industry as a whole. I'm not just talking about Kia or Hyundai here. But we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see what happens. In the meanwhile, you've got to keep your questions coming to us. And um, yes, tomorrow on the show, we'll also bring back the contest and bring you more questions that you can answer so that, uh, you know, you have a chance to win those prizes. And um, just as a reminder to you as well, that uh, for those of you who don't know, you got to go to carandbike.com slash freewheeling and uh, enter the contest. Just give us your details, answer the questions, and who knows, I could be announcing your name here on the show very soon. So with that, I am getting questions about whether the Telluride is coming to India or not. You know what? Do this. Go, go across to uh, youtube.com and uh, take a look at uh, <laughs> our review. And I've talked about a few things in there about what I think will happen. So do that and then, you know what, I'll leave you with pictures of the Kia Telluride. It's certainly a very impressive car. It is World Car of the Year 2020. And so I'll sign off for now. If you're stepping out, please wear your helmets, please wear your seatbelts, please wear your masks. Don't step out unless you absolutely have to. Stay safe, stay home, work from home, have yourselves a great night. And definitely join us tomorrow for the episode at 5 p.m. with uh, Hyundai's. Tarun Garg. So in the meanwhile, uh, please stay safe, like I said, and I'll leave you with the Telluride. Okay, I don't know why we came back from that video to that screen. So I'm going to continue playing that video for you. And I promise you this time, it is goodbye.